Good morning and welcome back to another video. My name's Simon and in this video we're going to make a bushcraft style stew. So I've got some nettles, I've got some thistles, I've got some hawthorn um, and I'm going to get some wild garlic. It's kind of getting to the end of the wild garlic now. As you can see, it's all looking a little bit limp, but there are a few leaves. The flowers have all kind of, um, have all kind of had it, but I'm going to collect a few leaves. I'm going to put them in just at the end, just to give it a nice little sort of garlicky burst, um, which I think will be quite nice. So I've come across this plant here, which I think is burdock. Now, burdock is something I did want to use in my stew, but I can't be 100% certain. Um, hemlock leaves are quite similar to burdock leaves, um, and uh, and the the distinguishing one of the distinguishing things about burdock are the burrs which grow on it. But it's a little bit early in the season, and I, and I, and I can't see any burrs, so I'm going to give this a miss. Um, you know, I think it, I think it's um, burdock. The, the the underside of the leaf looks right. It's got a sort of downy underside. It's quite matte in appearance. Um, and these veins on the, on the leaf, on the back of the leaf, seem to be going to the outside of the leaf, which is an indicator that it's burdock. Um, with hemlock, they tend, to, they tend to travel up parallel to the main stem of the leaf, and these don't. So I'm pretty sure it is, um, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna run the risk. I can't be 100% sure. I'm not an expert in plant identification. Um, and it's just not worth the risk if it, if it, if it is hemlock. Um, if it was burdock and I was certain, I would dig down and try and get the root out of this. It has a, has a long root which, which travels down um, and, uh, and I would have chopped that up and had that as a, as a root vegetable in my stew. But I'm going to give it a miss because I can't be sure. So we've got some cleavers here also known as goose grass. You may know it as sticky buds from the, uh, the old childhood game of chucking it on your mate's back and it gets stuck onto their jumper or their t-shirt or whatever. Um, animals carry it around because they're covered in little tiny hooks on the backs of the leaves and on the stems. Um, but when you, cook, when you cook them, those hooks almost completely disappear. Um, they sort of like melt away and, um, and they're all right. They're a bit fibrous to eat, but um, hopefully the the stewing will break them down a bit and they won't be quite so fibrous by the time they've cooked well. We'll get a few of those in. Okay, so while the fire is um, building up a bit, um, let's have a look at what we've got to put in the stew, shall we? Okay, so we've collected quite a lot here. Some stuff I'm going to put straight in my billy and start stewing straight away because I want it to cook for longer. Some stuff's going to go in a little bit later on um, and they're just, yeah, more, more delicate, so they take less cooking. Okay, so um, I want to get the the stems of the thistles in. I collected quite a few of those. Now based on experience from my last video, which you may or may not have watched, um, the tops of the stems are much softer and much nicer than the bottom. So I'm, I'm going to avoid, oh that's getting hot, 
I'm going to avoid the um, the bottoms of the stems. Now I did bring a few things from home um, just to bulk this out a little bit. Now you obviously you could do this without bringing anything extra with you, but I wanted to make it a bit more substantial for my lunch. So I've bought a potato, I've bought an onion. Find it. Which I'm probably just going to use half of. So one potato, one onion. I've bought some meat. Now, I'd originally planned to do this with um, pigeon breast, but I just couldn't get hold of any. So um, I went to the butchers this morning and bought some, some stewing beef. So there's going to be beef in this as well. Um, and the other thing I bought is some butter. So I'm going to put the potato in with the stems and boil those for probably um, 10 minutes or so. So I've got potato and my stems. So while the potatoes and the um, thistle stalks are cooking, I've just got my beef. I've got some nice bits of cubed beef there. And I've got my onions with a bit of butter in my frying pan. Oops. And I've literally just, just dragged some coals out just to the front of the fire here. And I'm just cooking them gently on those coals. I don't want them to burn, I just want the meat to brown a bit really and the onions to soften. Now this is another little tip I picked up off um, Mike from MCQ Bush Bushcraft. He is the wizard of bushcraft and um, he uses this idea of using a stick for the handle for your frying pan. This is, <coughs> this is actually just a plate, a metal plate you can buy, a titanium plate, <coughs> but it doesn't come with any sort of handle at all. And I have been using a Tranger handle in the past um, but the problem with that is um, it's only very short. So if you want to get your food into the into the fire to cook, you end, you end up inevitably burning your hands anyway. So he just uses a stick, cuts a bit of hazel or whatever, and then with his saw cuts a, a slot in it and wedges it over the edge of the pan and it acts as a handle like this. Works really well. So my beef is browning nicely. Onions are cooking down nice and slowly. Right, I'm going to get this into the pot now. Okay, everything's been on for about half an hour now, so the um, the potatoes are going to be well cooking down. The meat will be uh, will be cooking nicely. What I want to do is I want to get some of this greenery um, that's going to take slightly longer, like the goose grass and um, the nettles as well. I'm going to get them in now so they've got a bit longer to cook. And I'm going to save the hedge garlic, or jack by the hedge, and the ramsons, or wild garlic, I'm going to put them in right at the end. They're hardly going to need any cooking anyway, and I'm worried if I put them in too soon, it will just destroy the flavour. Um, and they're sort of the more pungent flavours which I want to come through the stew. Right, I'm going to chop the last few ingredients, and that is the wild garlic and the jack by the hedge. I don't think I'm going to put all of this wild garlic in actually, there's a lot here. I think that will be plenty. It's a very pungent flavour anyway, in fact I'm going to take one, one more out. It's a very pungent flavour anyway. I'm 
going to give that literally two minutes. Well, here we go. Moment of truth. Oh man, it's like a flavour explosion. Definitely getting garlicky flavour. Uh, there is an earthy flavour, which is understandable. But overall, it's a, it's like a cabbage soup sort of flavour. Really nice. And everything is cooked down nicely as well. Even the, the, one, the one bit I was most worried about was the goosegrass, the cleavers, because they can be, they can be quite fibrous, but no, they've all cooked down really nicely. Mm. I definitely recommend it. Let's see how the meat is. Mm. It's been cooked long and slow, so the meat's quite tender. Which is good because it was only um, it was only beef skirt, which um, if you cook it too quickly can be quite tough. But um, you can see you've got to cook it slowly. But that's, that's come out really well. They're good. Um, that stew came out fantastically well. I'm really really pleased with it. And obviously you can vary that. Um, hugely you know depending on, on, on what there is about where you are in the world as well you know um, but um, yeah it was really good it came out really well well thanks for watching I hope you've enjoyed the video it's been a nice one to make this one it's always good when you've got something to eat at the end of it and I think Maggie will agree with that as well if you've got any comments please drop them in the in the comment section below I, I do you know I say it in every video but it, it's true I love to I love to get get comments I love to read my comments and see what people have to say um, any any tips um, or maybe things that you've tried um, if you've if you've ever tried to put together a, a kind of like a bushcrafty foraged stew um, that'd be it'd be really interesting to see what other what other people have, have tried and what works so take care of yourselves and I look forward to seeing you on the next one cheers mm -hmm.